Can you imagine hurting one of your eyes, but suddenly the other eye also goes blind? Quite astonishingly, this has been reported in the medical literature and it's called sympathetic ophthalmia, which means sympathy of the eye. One eye goes damaged, which we call the exciting eye, and then the other eye will show signs of sympathy as of losing sight, which is called the sympathizing eye. This phenomenon was first noted 2000 years ago by Hippocrates, but it wasn't until the 1840s when William Mackenzie provided the first full clinical description of the disease, coining the term sympathetic ophthalmitis. But what's behind all of this drama? The original hypothesis proposed by Mackenzie in the 19th century suggested the bilateral impact of sympathetic ophthalmia to be the result of inflammation in the injured eye that propagated along the optic nerve and the optic chiasma to the contralateral eye. Nowadays, this hypothesis has been overwhelmingly replaced with a newer one, which attributes the whole process to an autoimmune reaction. See, what happens is, when your eye is injured by a type of trauma, whether physical or chemical, it causes damage to different layers of your eye. Each eye has three layers, the sclera, the uva, and the retina. In the area surrounding the border of the retina and the uva, right over here, there are some type of substances that have never been exposed to the immune system. So with the trauma damaging these areas, the substances, which are self-antigens, will be released, and then identified by the immune system as foreign antigens, causing a cascade of immune reactions and antibody release, which ultimately leads to blindness in both eyes. Let me explain more. Baby white blood cells go to school before they are released into blood. During school, they are educated to recognize the body's own substances, or better said, self-antigens, from foreign antigens. This teaching course is called immune tolerance. They learn that if they see the self-antigen down the road, when they grow up, they should tolerate them and not respond and call for backup. They will deactivate themselves in a process named energy. However, the physical isolation of eye antigens results in the body's white blood cells never having exposure to them at any time during development or school time. So, at the time of graduation, they have not learned that they are self-antigens. And if the opportunity arises and they get exposed to the antigen, the alarm will go on and the drama will begin. So, let's have a recap. Trauma hits the eye, which causes the release of some immune privileged self-antigens. Then, white blood cells identify them as foreigners and subsequently will signal the attack and anti-body production resulting in the destruction of the self-antigens in both eyes, which also leads to the formulation of nodular aggregations called dalin fuchs nodules. And this whole process is sympathetic ophthalmia. The exact self-antigen responsible for all this mess is not yet confirmed. Possible suspects are melanin, retinal soluble antigen, rhodopsin, retinoid binding protein, and recovering. While it is generally agreed that the inciting event behind sympathetic ophthalmia is a penetrating injury, some exceptions such as a non-perforating ocular procedure and laser therapies have been associated with the disease. It is good to know that the onset of sympathetic ophthalmia is variable appearing any time between 1 week and 66 years after the inciting injury, with the majority of cases occurring within a 1 year time span. Also, the incident rate stands around half percent following an injury. This is a relatively low percentage, but can still happen to anyone as it happened to Louis Braille, the inventor of the Braille system, who injured one of his eyes as a child and lost vision in his other eye owing to sympathetic ophthalmia. So always remember, safety first.